Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Obicast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode, we bring the latest insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. We're joined in this week's episode by Dr. Noreen McHugh and postgraduate student Idel O'Connor to hear more about an ongoing project examining methane emissions in sheep. Idel explains how they use in portable accumulation chambers to measure emissions from up to 72 sheep per day in Chagas, Gatanrae and on commercial farms. Idel explains to us how much methane different ages of sheep emit and how this compares to other livestock. We discuss the variation observed in the level of emissions from sheep and Noreen explains how they've collected over 7,000 records and examined the underlying genetic component that relates to this. She describes how they hope to incorporate this into the Sheep Ireland Index in the future to breed lower mitten sheep, similar to what's happened in New Zealand. Finally, we finish up with Noreen acknowledging the support to get this project off the ground, as it's one of the first of its kind in the Northern Hemisphere. We start off, however, with Noreen explaining the importance of this work in the current climate. I suppose we're all aware that um, climate change, you know, is the hot topic um, out there at the minute in the media. And I suppose agriculture, we know that agriculture is getting um, is getting its fair share of coverage in it. So why exactly is that? When we look at agriculture in total in Ireland, it accounts for about 35 percent of the total emissions. But if we break that down further and we look at the actual the, the component coming from the animal itself due to methane emissions, um, it's about just under 60%. So 57% of it um, is due to um, what we call uh, fermentation from the animal. So we know that methane um, is quite a potent greenhouse gas as well. Um, so, you know, there's a big um, emphasis being put on our animal uh, production in terms of agriculture um, to try and reduce that level of the of the 57% to as low as possible. Obviously, knowing one very important element of that is accurately accounting what each of the different sectors contribute and indeed within the agricultural sector, what the sheep industry contributes. There's very limited information actually collected on this up to now. Absolutely. Um, so a lot of what we're assuming um, the methane emissions from our from our industry, be it uh, sheep beef or da- sheep beef or dairy, it's coming from book book values from research that's been done. You know, um, it could be 10, 15 years ago on very different systems to what what we have here in Ireland. So you know, a lot of that information is coming from animals that are fed indoors. Um, whereas you know, we know that our animals obviously graze at pasture for a large proportion of the year. And I suppose it's very important for us for the whole methane message is to actually make sure that what values that are actually being put out there for, for agriculture and especially for sheep, sheep, beef and dairy, that they are actually reflective of what's happening on the ground in terms of our methane emissions. And I know it's, it's a major component of the work undertaken in that way and indeed on some commercial farms at the moment. Idel, I might bring you in here for a moment. Like, how do you go about measuring methane from sheep? Um, so we're using a machine called portable accumulation chambers. So they're essentially just an aluminium box and we put the sheep into the chamber for 50 minutes and we take methane, oxygen and carbon dioxide measurements at three time points. So at zero minutes when the sheep goes into the chamber at 25 minutes and at 50 minutes, we have 12 chambers so we can measure roughly 72 sheep per day. And the chambers are mounted on a trailer, so it allows us um, to take the chambers around the country to take um, methane measurements on commercial farms. But the main thing with the pack is that it won't give us absolute values, but it will allow us to identify high and low emitters in the flock. So ultimately, we want to identify these low emitters and breed sheep for reduced emissions. You're, you're ultimately really getting a snapshot of what an animal is doing at that point in time. Yeah, it's a point in time measurement. So we're you're extrapolating that 50 minute measurement up to get a grams per day value. And like, uh, as you mentioned there, some of the trailer, I know that has been to some of the CPT flocks that Sheep Ireland are working with as well. If anyone meets it on the road, it's quite unusual looking, but you have the capacity to put through 72 animals. So this has been a core part of your postgraduate work. Um, you're also looking at though in a variety of different animals. So I imagine either you're looking at in yos, you're looking at lambs, hoggets, and maybe on different crops as well. Yeah, so a big part of my project is following a group of 60 female animals that were selected as lambs in 2019. Um, so I follow them right through um, their two-year-old yos now. Um, so I have followed them through and we're looking at how their methane um, varies depending 
on their life stage and on the different diets, so out grazing grass or indoors on silage. And just maybe, I know the figures might be of that much relevance, us, but how much methane do lambs or ewes put out? And like maybe if you're able to kind of give us a snapshot, how does that compare, we say, to a cow? So the values we've seen for our lambs are nearly eight, nearly nine grams per day of methane. Um, so New Zealand are getting figures uh, roughly similar to us. So they've got their lambs are producing 7.5 grams of methane per day. Um, our hoggets then are nearly 17 grams per day of methane. And then the dry yo is roughly 24 grams per day of methane. If you compare that then to cattle, they're producing up to nearly 200, 300 grams per day. So you can see a sheep is just a small proportion of what a cow is producing. It's quite good. And as you mentioned, some work done in New Zealand. It's great to see this undertaken. Noreen, if I just come back to you for a moment, like we know that there's dietary influences can affect meat. And Adele has touched on it there, looking at the full stage of production on an animal. Is there an underlying genetic influence? Um, yeah, so that was something that we were very keen um, to to look at, Kieran, because as as Edel mentioned, you know these pack chambers they're really to rank animals, and what we wanted to do was see could we rank high and low emitting animals, and if so, could we see say that those low emitting animals that is due to genetics alone rather than any diet. So, um, as you mentioned, and as Edel mentioned, we. we sent these packs out to flocks, to commercial flocks this year. That's the first time it's ever been done in Ireland. Um, and our aim was to measure as many yews as possible in their natural environment, that be it a grass, grass, um, grass based environment. So um, this year we measured them on the central progeny tests that are run by Sheep Ireland. Uh, the reason we targeted those flocks is because they have lots of informa other information on them. Uh, but also we have parentage recorded. So, you know, sire and dam information, it's key when it comes to genetics. So when we look at the data, it's preliminary data, because like I said, we, we've only one, day, one year's measurement done to, to date, but we have about uh, two, sorry, 7,000 records in total on about 2,000 an animals to date. Um, so when we look at that uh, and we look at the heritability of it, so that's basically telling us how much of the methane emission that a yo produced is down to her genetics. We're seeing that it's about 26% heritable. So that's a really nice heritability. What does that mean? In practice, it means that 26% of the difference between two yo's in their methane emissions is solely down to genetics. It's not driven by grass, uh, or it's not driven by driven by the diet type. It's not driven by breed or stage of lactation or you know sta life stage of the animal. It's purely down to the genetics of the animal. So when we compare that heritability to other traits, it's it's comparable to what we get for live weight. Um, be that uh, weaning weight on a lamb. So it's telling us that there's a large component of the methane emission that a lamb uh, or an animal produces, it's purely down to its genetics. And if we bring that even a step further and we rank the animals from the top 10% to the bottom 10%, there's a huge difference in the methane emissions. There's almost 16 grams a day in the difference between those yews. Edel told us that on average, the yews are producing about 20 grams. So you can tell that we have very low emitters in there and some very high emitters in there as well. So again, what it's telling us is, you know, there's a strong genetic component. There's lots of variation between animals in there. Um, and it's something that we can work on um, to potentially put into the indexes in the, in the future, into our Sheep Ireland indexes. That has huge potential, Lauren, because like, with any genetic trait, once it's in there, it's there to stay independent of the management. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose I should say we're not the first country in the world to do this. You know, other countries around the world, especially Southern Hemisphere and New Zealand have looked at this and they actually have a breeding value or a star rating, if you like, for methane in their indexes. Um, so we'll be one of the first in the Northern Hemisphere to do this. Um, but as you say, Kieran, the, the key thing is to get it in there. You know, it might not make a massive difference to the overall index of, of an animal. But what it does is make sure that, you know, we're selecting the best animal for our production system, be that in terms of, you know, lambing traits, growth. But we're also being uh, cognizant of the of the methane emissions that's coming from that animal as well. And look, I think we have to be very cognizant that there's a huge amount of effort goes into from Edel and all the team that's involved in the project, but it's also quite expensive to do, Noreen. Like, this just doesn't happen, and we're one of the very few countries in the world that's looking at this. 
Absolutely, Kieran. I, I suppose at this stage we'd like to acknowledge, you know, the, the funding that has made this possible through our own Department of Agriculture um, and Europe, European fun, funding through ERANET as well. You know, it's as you said, it's not an easy trait to measure. Um, it's very time consuming. Um, takes we can measure up to 72 animals a day, but you know, there is a lot of work involved in, in getting all those readings on those individual animals. But I suppose given that, you know, it's a trait that's in the media and it's not going away anytime soon, it's brilliant that we now have, you know, some base values on our sheep industry here in Ireland and be it at, at the grass level as well, which is great. Um, and as well as that, you know, we can take it a step forward, forward hopefully in the future and actually look at start breeding animals that have reduced methane emissions through the incorporation of this data into our Sheep Ireland indexes. Look, it's great to hear that that focus is ongoing and speaking an industry need at the moment. And look, I'd like to thank you both very much for coming on and hopefully we'll get an update. You dial off yourself and Noreen when the project's near finished. Perfect. Okay, we're going to wrap the episode up at this point. I'd like to thank Noreen and Idel again for giving up their time to be with us and giving us a bit of an insight into a very interesting and very important project that's ongoing at the moment. I have included a link in the description to a short video where you can find out a bit more about the project that Idel is working on and see the Portable Accumulation Chamber in action. That's it for me for this episode. For any other updates on the Sheep Programme, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chalga Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and listen in to any of our episodes.